Okay, now let's consider, uh, look at the five learning rules that we uh, decided to cover. So first, before we go to the first learning rule, let's look at the general learning rule. So the weight adjustment is proportional to the product of the input X and the learning signal R, meaning that when you have the old weights, when you have the old weights, sorry. So when you have your old weights here, you're going to, they're going to be changed when you're adjusting your weights according to this learning rule. So the new weights would be the old weights plus delta W. So this delta W is, uh, is given by a constant C, which is the learning rate times the learning signal dot product with the input here. And so your new weight would be given by this formula, therefore, uh, WI plus C R times the learning signal dot product X of T, which is your input here, your input at time T. And you notice that this learning signal is a function of uh, so this learning signal R here, so this is your neuron. So you have X1, W, I1, because you're dealing with the i neuron, X2, W, I2, X, J, W, I, J, X, N, W, J, N, for this neuron I. And then you, this neuron I is going to give you an output O I. So this output here, is compared to the desired output for this node here, di, to give you the learning signal r. And therefore this learning signal is a function of the weights at time t, your input x of t at time t, and the desired input at time t, okay? And so this is w i, which is WI1, WI2, WIN transpose is the weight vector undergoing training. So let's look at this is so this is the formula for the this is the general formula that we're going to use. Okay, let's look for the learning rule number one, which is the error correction learning rule. So we're correcting an error. So this is a learning rule which is correcting an error. So we have an input vector. We have a, an output Y. So this is your uh, neuron K. Uh, and then it's uh, compared to the desired output DK for this node K, which produces an error. This error is used to modify the weights to adjust the weights. If you look at it in a signal flow graph of output neurons, so this is your X, X1, X2, X3, and then you have X1, W, K1. So this is the K node, and this is W, J, N, which is the um, J input. So, so this would be W, K, J because you're dealing, you're talking about input J or XJ and for this node K. And so you get VK, which is fed to an activation function to give you the output for node K compared to the desired output for node K creates an, an error for node K, which is fed back to correct all these weights or the weight vector. So the error signal E K of N is the difference between the desired and the actual output. DK minus YK. N is the time step. So the error signal activates a control mechanism for corrective adjustment of the synaptic weight, meaning that you use this error to correct the synaptic weight. And you can do it by minimizing a cost function or an error or an index of performance given by this formula. So half the error 
ek square. So the square of the error. And this is called the instantaneous value of error energy. Step by step, so step by step, so you perform a step by step adjustment until the system reaches steady state, synaptic waves are stabilized, they don't change. This is called the delta rule or the withdrawal half rule. Again, our W or the variation of the weight, WKJ, so back to, this is the WKJ. So the error, so the way it changes, we change this WKJ, which is delta WKJ, equal to eta times the error K, error for error K for this neuron, times XJ, the input, the input, this input here, XJ, because you co we're considering only the change for this node here. For this uh, for this weight, so eta is a rate of learning or learning rate. So the new weight W K J N plus one equal the old one plus the delta W, meaning that the new weight here W K J at the next step or time t plus one equal W the old one plus the the adjustment in the weight. Uh, you can include a unit delay operator if you're worried about the feedback, you know, the time to feedback your signal. Uh, so the adjustment is proportional to the product of the error signal and the input signal again. So that this delta W is proportional to the error signal times the input signal, just like what we saw for the general learning group. Error correction learning is local, meaning that it's just for this weight here. You don't take, so when you want to change the weight here, you don't take care of anything else, it's local. The learning rate eta, this learning rate, determines the stability or, or, or convergence. So again, how fast you reach convergence. So for example, the perceptron learning rule, so it's a supervised learning only applicable for binary and neuron response, meaning that your input can have plus one or minus one. So your activation function is the sign function, okay? And the learning signal is equal to R, equal to the difference between the desired output and the actual output for this node I here. So you want to modify the weight just using the generalized learning rule by using this formula C times R, which is in this case the I minus OI, and OI is the sign of the weighted input X times the input signal. So, so this is a sign uh, uh, activation function. So OI here is again the, so you apply the activation function to the weighted, to the weighted input. And because your F is the sine function, so OI is given by this formula. So if F is the sine function, so you can here have here plus one or minus one, plus one or minus one. So your delta WI is either, so if this is plus one, so you have one minus minus one, so it's plus two, plus two, and then you have your C and the X. If this is equal to uh, uh, plus one, okay, so you, you, can, you can work it out to, say, to find that you can have two cases, plus two CX or minus two CX. Now, if DI is equal to sine or our output, if DI equal to the output or DI equal to the sine of the weighted um, uh, input, then this R becomes equal to zero and your delta WI 
is equal to zero. So when the i equals to oi, the delta wi does not change. So you've reached equilibrium kind of. You've, uh, your system has learned. So in this case, again, for example, in the case of the classification task of a classification task or any other task, the weight is adapted only when the classification error occurs. Now, when we've seen the case of the perceptron, you can, we can adjust or we can assign a random weights to uh, at the beginning when we initialize our, um, our, our uh, neurons. So this is the perceptron learning rule. Again, x1, x2, so our input vector of dimension m. The corresponding weights, so we're talking about node i, which has output o i. So you are going to have weights which are w i one, w i for this node two, w i j, okay, for this input here, j, x j, and up to w i n, okay? So this weighted input, so x1, w1, wi1 plus x2, wi2, and so on, they're going to be summed here. So this is, you're going to have the net activation, which is fed to the activation function, which is the sine function, which is either plus one or minus one, to give you the output. Your desire, this is the actual output assuming that you randomize your um, unit, your perceptron, is compared, compared to the desired output to give you an error, di minus oi. And you're going to multiply this error here, this error, this, um, we called it, we called it the learning signal r. So we're going to, Sorry, so we're going to multiply di minus oi, d. this is our r, by x and c. So we're going to have c di minus oi times the input x, x. And this will give us the delta w, which is used to modify the weights of this node here. This is a vector, of course. So you have, you're going to have w i, one delta w i two delta w i j delta w i n. Now, if you look, if you want to look at it in a vectorial form, so if this is your input x, this is your current weight w. Okay, so this is the delta w. So if you're, if you're, if the if your delta w is 2cx, meaning that your w prime is equal, is going to increase, w plus 2cx. So it's going to increase here. So you're going to have the projection w prime transpose x. So this projection here of w, the new w is going to be greater than the projection of the W, all W, okay? And so your weight is going to get the new weight here, W prime, is going to get closer to X. While if, if you're subtracting, so if the delta W is equal to minus two CX, meaning that if the sine of the I is less than sine of W transpose X, then you're going to go, so your weight here, this is your uh, old weight, the new weight, you're going to move in this direction, the new weight is going to come here, meaning that your W transpose, W prime trans, uh, transpose X, or the projection of this new W, or W prime on X, is going to be less than the projection of the old W, on x, w transpose x. And therefore, the more you move, maybe you are going to reach your, your, your new w, 
is going to be perpendicular to your input x. So you keep moving this w, delta w when you're doing your learning until you reach this condition, w transpose x. And we've seen this, that this defines the hyperplane that cor correctly classifies all input vectors. Just like in this case here, that we've seen before, we want to classify these two inputs. So this is the equation of the hyperplane. So it is given by w transpose x equals zero. The data learning rule, this is another example. So the first example was, let me just, uh, so, so the first example was the perceptron learning rule. Now we're going to look at the data learning rule. And in this case, the data learning rule is applied when you have continuous activation function. Before we had the sine function, so it was discontinuous kind of. So now we're going to have a, a, a continuous learning function. So in this case, the learning rate, the learning signal R is called the delta. And it's defined by this formula. So it's the desired output for node I minus the actual output for node I, which is the weighted, uh, the weighted input. And then, so this is the desired output. So, sorry, the actual output. So the weighted input, and then you feed it to an activation function, you get your uh, actual output minus, so it's R is DI minus OI if you want. Um, the actual output times f prime of uh, wi x. So this is derived by calculating the gradient vector with respect to wi of the squared error. So you take your error here, which is half of the desired output minus the actual output square. So the squared error. If you take the gradient here, so you just di di differentiate it. So it is the two and the two, they cancel. But, but because you're, you're computing the gradient with respect to W, so you're going to have a minus sign here. And then this same expression here, which is here, you're going to have here. And then you're going to have F prime because when you differentiate, so, so this is the rule of differentiating a composite function. So F prime times your X here, chain rule. So this is the general one. So your delta W, the error is given by minus eta times this gradient or eta times, because we have seen that the gradient is given by this formula. So if you replace it here, this is your overall formula. If you're looking at a particular delta W i j, just like, just like in this case, the delta W i j. So it is going to be, uh, so you're going to, in this case, replace your x by x j, okay? And, and then your error is going to be given by the partial derivative of uh, delta E with respect to Wij, or this, uh, this, uh, this error, or uh, times, okay. So the weight initialization, just like we've seen in the case of uh, the, uh, an example before, you always initialize it randomly, you can do it. Yeah, so we assume that it is a random initialization. And this is called also the continuous perceptron training rule. So when we have uh, an activation function equal to the sine, so it's called, just called the perceptron training rule. When our, when our activation function is continuous, this learning rule becomes the continuous perceptron training rule. And the same principle applies. So we have our input x1, it's an input vector, x1 to xn of dimension n. The corresponding weights for this node here, i, so you're going to have wi1, wi2, wij. So you multiply x1 by wi1 plus x2 times wi2, 
and the sum, the overall sum here, you feed it to a continuous, a continuous uh, um, activation function. You're going to have your actual output for node i compared to your desired output. This error here is multiplied, is, is actually multiplied by the gradient of this, of f prime net i. So this would be your r, your, uh, the, uh, your signal. And as uh, per the uh, generalized learning rule, you multiply by constant C and your output to get your delta W. And this is again, the delta W is used to modify the weights. Now the same uh, applies for the case. So we've seen that um, for the discrete uh, perceptron. So we have uh, an input X, our W, and then depending on, uh, um, depending on this, this factor here, whether it's positive or negative, then we can move away. So we can move closer to, okay, so we can move in this direction or in this direction. And ideally we would like our uh, new or a new uh, output vector, we, can, we have to, Keep changing these weights, keep moving until we find that uh, the weight is perpendicular to our input, input vector. Another uh, training rule is called the withdraw half learning rule, which, uh, which was introduced in 1962. So it is a supervised learning and in this case, it is independent of the activation function of the neuron. So, um, uh, so you can consider it as a special case of the delta learning rule when you have, instead of uh, having an activation function f of the weighted, just so this is the activation and this is the activation function. So in this case, you uh, assume in the, for the case of the withdraw half learning rule, your activation function is, there's no activation function. So you get the same thing. You get the, the output is the argument of the function here. So you minimize the square error between the desired output value and the neuron activation, activation value. And sometimes it's called the uh, least mean square learning rule. So the learning signal R is equal to di minus wi transpose x. We don't have f here because uh, we're assuming that we don't have, it is independent of the activation function. And the delta w, just by uh, um, looking at the previous, um, at the delta learning rule, uh, the derivation of the, of, of the delta w is the same except that then uh, that instead of having your F here, you don't have an F, okay? This is for the delta W for the whole vector for node I, and this is for a particular input XJ, okay, XJ. Thank you.